I've been dreaming of some books to read, all of them to see and all to feel. I just want to have so many books and read them through and through and love them like I do. And that is true love's dreams. Wow, I don't know how to rhyme. Have you noticed that I don't know how to rhyme? Also, check out my robe and my pajamas with Baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not his name. It will still be Baby Yoda to me, okay? We are doing robed book haul. Hello, beautiful bookworms. My name is Katarina and welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to be doing a book haul for you guys. It's my October no, November book haul, okay, <laughs> I don't know which month it is, um, and I have some things to show you guys, I am very excited, I am filming this at my boyfriend's house, this is our manga shelf, I can maybe do a tour of the shelf if you want to, but it's a new location for me to film while I'm here, and since I have some new manga, I will just show you them, and then if I have more books, I will add uh, scenes to this book haul as per usual. So first of all we have two mangas from the same series and those are volume 5 and 6 of Goodnight Poon Poon and they are still in their protective uh, plastics. I am doing Goodnight Poon Poon's uh, series very slowly. I have volume 1 and volume 2 and now I have volume 5 and volume 6. I'm missing some, obviously, but you know it's it's just they're pretty expensive and they have to be like done slowly and some of them are out of order at the moment so this is what we get and yeah I'm very excited because this is by Inu Asano. I have read a lot of his works and enjoy them and so I cannot wait to read his actual supposed magnum opus so very excited. I also got volume 9 of The Witch and the Beast by Kusuke Satake, which I've only read one of the volumes, but I loved it and I said, okay, this is the type of story that I want to read. It's very, very dark. It's a dark fantasy where all the witches are bad and they put curses on people and we have um, two people. One is a magician and the other is like a, a beast of a person and she's cursed and uh, they are searching for the witch that cursed her. And it's just, it's, it's amazing. I, I really like it. The art style is beautiful, the covers are beautiful, and all of the dark magic on the inside is pretty great. So cannot wait to actually read all of them. Then we have volume 20 of Children of the Way, the Whales, Children of the Waves is another thing, Children of the Whales by Abby Yumeta. It's a short one. I already have read all of the others before this one. However, I do believe that the series should be finishing right about now. Most of the story is told. I don't know where they are going with this. Um, however, I do love the covers and I also like the excuse to have one more beautiful emotional manga to read. However, I do think that it's one of those that is extending the time that it should be having, if you know what I mean. I love them and I will keep on reading them, but it is time to stop, I think. It, this is not the last one, but we will see if it stops in the next one or not. Then we have volume 3 and volume 4 of Spy Family by Tatsuya Endu. And I don't fucking need to tell you guys that this is one of the best series ever. I have read the first two volumes and I cannot wait to continue with these. I it just, I love it. I'm seeing the animation at the same time that I'm reading it and it, it's just, it's incredible. It makes me laugh, it makes me cry, it makes me just love life and my cat decided that now was the time to just scratch his scratch bowl, but whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to pick up volume 3 and then volume 4 and continue with this series. Then I have a new one which is called Momo the Blood Taker and this is by Akira Sujitu and this is apparently a vampire story. However, it's supposed to be a dark vampire story and not one of those trashy things that I really enjoy to read. It says Tokyo is played by 
is plagued by a string of murders where the victims are drained of blood. While the city whispers about vampires, Detective Mikogami Keigo seeks to avenge his murdered lover. As he stalks the man with two faces, Mikogami catches the attention of a mysterious silver-haired girl. Maybe a vampire, probably a vampire. I really like the corrupt cop thing and corrupt detective kind of thing. So I'm hoping that they like sort of join forces. I don't know. I don't know if the vampires are supposed to be bad or cool in this world. We will see, I guess. But the cover is beautiful and the spine is beautiful as well. So it might be a good one for me. Then I got the first volume of a beautiful edition of Erased by K. Sanbe. So this is basically the story of this dude that is able to come back in time for a little bit, some minutes, but one day he comes back in time like 18 years or something and he's trying to solve the murder of someone very close to him. This is what I know about the story. I don't want to know anything else to be honest, but this edition is pretty beautiful. It is more beautiful so uh, in the hardcover edition. As you can see, like all of this is binding and it's beautiful and amazing. And the last one that I have here to show you for now is The Girl from the Other Side, Sue Arun Deluxe Edition Volume 1. This is by Nagabe and it's one of the most beautiful mangas that I have ever seen and that I actually have in my possession. This is printed on the hardcover itself. The spine of it is gorgeous. The back of it is beautiful. It has some end papers and end pages and it's just extraordinary as you can see i am very very happy to be able to have this although i do have the entirety of the paperbacks i haven't finished them yet but it's, i'm really happy to have this hardcover edition it's beautiful it's gorgeous and it's amazing for my collection i also got issue one and issue two of Ten Thousand black feathers this is um, one of the stories in the Bone Orchard Mythos world that is created by Jeff Lemire and Andrew Sorrentino and in this case Dave Stewart. Um, I don't know what this is about, however, I do love the work and combination of work of Jeff Lemire and Andrew Sorrentino, so I'm very excited to get into this one. I haven't read the first one in the Bone Orchard Mythos world, however, I will because I'm very excited to get into it. The covers are also completely beautiful and somewhat creepy, so I am hoping for creepy, creepy stories. We also have, at last, Something is Killing the Children, Volume 5. This is by James Tynan IV, Weather de la Dera, and Mikel Muerto, and I am a huge, huge fan of Something is Killing the Children. I have been dying to know more about the past of our main character and now the future of where she's going and what she's going to do and um, all about the organization that kills monsters. And um, this cover is great. This is very like the lone hero uh, kind of thing and I, I am so excited. I have been waiting for this for a long, long time and it says the road to tribulation is like the, the subtitle of the thingy very excited very very excited we also got another very exciting thing and that is i am just over the moon that i got this it's been out of print for a bit <clears throat> in the place where i get my mangas um but yeah finally finally that is the way of the house husband by kosuke ono and i have seen the netflix tv series adaptation of this manga is perfection however however the art style on the inside of the manga is way better than in the animation i don't know how they could turn it into such a lacking animation um i love the art style on the inside and this is basically the story of a former uh fiercest member of yakuza he um has like a legend following him um, because of being like this terrible yakuza person like this mafia like mobster man uh, but he is now married happily married and um he is a house husband he does all of the domestic jobs he cooks he cleans he goes to buy stuff and he makes his wife really really happy and she's the one that works in the relationship and it's kind of like how he applies the principles of <laughs> 
mobster and mafia into doing the way of the house husband and he's like like this has to be perfect and if i don't clean everything perfectly i will chop off one of my fingers and the wife is like no <laughs> and it's incredible it's very comedic like and uh for those of us that have to actually clean the house and do some of those things it's actually very very funny to to see uh his his ways of doing stuff he's also like one of the funniest and caring people ever however because he has this semblance people always assume that he's really really mean <laughs> and it's incredibly funny i i love the way of the house husband and if you haven't read this and you are a starter in manga i highly recommend this one for you Next, we have the solving classroom in the hardcover edition this is of course by junji ito and even though i already read this and reviewed it i will leave it linked somewhere if i do remember this is the hardcover edition and now we have every single one of his works in hardcover which is a feat um since they're not particularly cheap um, but it's an incredible thing and I think we deserve to have all of his collectibles you can see them right there that's our Junji Ito shelf also has other authors like Kazuo Mez, but we have all of the entirety of Junji Ito's there and I am <laughs> at a loss for words of how I'm happy about this and that of course includes his new manga Black Paradox and uh, Black Paradox I do believe is an anthology no, it's actually just one story. It says, Four people intent on killing themselves meet through the suicide website Black Paradox. Maruzo, a nurse who despairs about the future. Taburo, a man who is tortured by his doppelganger. Pitan, an engineer with his own robot clone. And Baraki, a, human, a women, woman who agonizes about the birthmark on her face. They wander together in search of the perfect death, fatally opening a door that leads into a rather bizarre destiny. So this kind of sounds like Hellraiser a little bit. Um, I don't know. I just... Uh, the cover of this is so cool. And I love how this shines. You can't see it because it's really dark outside. Um, but yeah, it's all black. It's really beautiful. And I'm very excited to get into this one. Hopefully, at the time that you're seeing this video, I will already have read this one. Then we have The Ancient Imago's Bride, Volume 16 by Kure Yamazaki. And I am on point reading the series i still enjoy it so so much even though i do believe that the second arc is being way bigger than the first one i don't know why but i'm enjoying it and hopefully there will be some continuation still uh, i'm not going to obviously get into a lot of uh, details about this since it's already the 16th volume of it but the ancient magus bar is very enjoyable i still have to see the um, animation of it to see if it's good or not so stay tuned but there is an animation if you don't want to read 16 volumes of this then i have a new horror one which is called be very afraid of nanako ikuni ikuki inuki be very uh, let's try this again be very afraid of kanako inuki i think this is it and this is by Kanako Inuki, okay. Uh, so it says, Japan's queen of horror manga returns. And first of all, a woman, queen of horror in Japan. This is reason alone to have this. And it says, the six hair-raising stories selected for this collection features an array of unnerving characters and scenarios brought to life in Inuki's signature art style in the tradition of Junji Ito, Kazuo Mez, Shintaro Kago, and Junko Mizuno. Uh, where Inuki really shines is in her ability to capture the primal terror that a dark, empty building can inspire in the most rational person. And this cover is just so fucking creepy. There's like an amount of roses and a face of like a doll-like creature with big, big eyes and the hands coming out and everything. So I'm, I'm extremely excited to get into this one. But the release I was most expecting, and I mean, the manga in itself already looks amazing. It's PTSD Radio Volume 1 by Masahaki Nakayama. I'm going to read just the back. It says, um, an unseen hand tugs at your braid. You find an old sealed box with a tangled mess of dark hair inside. In the hallway outside your room, a river of curls is slinking away an ominous lump at its heart. 
It won't be long before you feel Ogushi-sama's fingers slithering across your scalp. Before it's too late, tune into the PTSD radio. And the comments for this are, PTSD radio is by far the creepiest and most creative horror series I've ever read. A nerving horror that will stick with you. A decidedly impressive entry into the horror manga catalog that belongs on my shelf next to Junji Ito and Usamaru Furuya. Do, do you need any more attempts to convince you that you should read this? Because I fucking hope not. This, this sounds amazing. It sounds like all of that Japanese good of horror movies with ladies with long black hair and ghosts that come to avenge themselves. It's just amazing. And the art style of this, I have seen some of the things and it's fucking spooky. I I absolutely am in love. Then we have The Nice House on the Lake, issue 10, which is by James Tynion IV, Alvaro Martinez Bueno, and Jordi Belair. And I've been waiting to read this 10th issue for so fucking long. I just realized that she's entering a pool of maggots, which is not gross at all. Um, nice House on the Lake is one of the greatest, I believe, comic series, horror series that are coming out at the moment. If you haven't got into it yet, do it. It's just great. And there's only two more issues until it is finally done. So you can see that you don't have a lot to read. And it's just, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And I am very excited to have it. Then we have a variant cover of something that makes me extremely happy. And it is The Joker, The Man Who Stopped Laughing, issue one. And look at this. You can see the Joker, but the entirety of the cover is like his collars. And in the back, he's there laughing. And I do believe there's a lot of names that I know here from other works. And this is amazing because if you know me, you know that the Joker is like my favorite villain. So try not to spoil myself here, but I want to see all the names of the people that are kind of participating on this. Maybe it's at the end. We shall see. We shall see what it is. There's an ending there. Well, it's not there. I don't remember the first names of these people. Um, but yeah, the authors of this are, I think, Matthew Rosenberg. I think that's his first name. Uh, Di Giandomenico. I have no idea who this person is. Franca Villa. I know this person, but I don't remember the first name. And uh, I think Ad Adolf Priento. Possibly. Uh, but yeah, these are the people that are involved in it, and it, it's just the art style of this. I'm passing like m my eyes through it, and it's just the most fucking amazing thing I've ever seen. The only problem with this edition is that every time I lay a finger on it, uh, the finger gets there, <laughs> so it has to be cleaned frequently when used. But I don't mind, I don't mind because it's the most perfect comic edition for a Joker fan ever in the history of humanity, so I'm very happy. Now, from the September Abominal uh, Book Club box, I have got the second-hand book, which was Richard Lehman's The Cellar. I am pretty excited for this. It's a horror one, and I have heard a lot about this author, but I haven't read anything about him yet, and I don't... I'm not really sure you can get all of these books still, so I'm very happy that I got one that I can read. Next one that I got was Full Immersion by Gemma Amore. This is also a horror. It's a very, very strange kind of psychological, brutal and terrifying sort of horror. Uh, it states that it's someone that has a specific trauma, but now it's kind of incarcerated in a survival situation. And so it's not about healing anymore. It's about surviving trauma. And then we have the hardcover edition signed and beautiful of Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke and Other Misfortunes by Eric Oroka. I've already read Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke in ebook. However, I haven't read the other stories and it is signed by the author, which is amazing. And I do want to reread the story and I do want to read more of his stories to actually get to know the writing style and see for myself if I really enjoy this author's writing style or not, since I was second guessing myself when I read things that have gotten worse since we last spoke. 
So, pretty excited for this. In the October Abominable Book Box Club thingy, I've got again three books. The second hand book is The Darkest Evening of the Year by Dean Koontz. I am not extremely excited for this one from what I read. It doesn't propel me to believe that this is going to be extremely horrific or thrilling. However, it's a Dean Koontz. I've read one. I have another to read, I think. I'm doomed to actually read and tell you what I think about it. I did read something inside when I was flipping through that said mother had uh, when mother came back, mother had a knife. And I was like, okay, that, that sounds a little bit more up my alley. Um, this apparently is about this girl. She runs a dog rescue and uh, she has this friend that does everything for her and will ride shotgun with her every time that she needs, even when um, there are no limits what she risks, like she faces really violent people to rescue their dogs and stuff. Um, and he always blames the fact that she has this work for them not to be married. So apparently he wants to be more than friends. I don't know how she feels about that. Um, and he is becoming aware that someone is watching her every move. Uh, and he begins to suspect these secrets about her. Um, and it says, he's the one man who might save her, but he has a problem of his own in the terrifying shape of Vanessa, his ex-lover. She comes crashing back into his life just as Amy needs him most. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. Then one of the new releases of that box was Black Lake Manor and this one is by Guy Morpus and I am extremely excited to read this one. This one is apparently um, about this detective. She goes to a place and in that place someone ends up murdered in a locked door murder kind of situation like the door is locked from the inside and the person is murdered uh how the, the killer got out and who is the killer but apparently there's a um, fantasy slash sci-fi twist in which there are people descended from a uh, generation and generations of people that can make time go back once in their life like uh 18 hours if i'm correct six hours six hours so when our detective is like solving the case time goes back and she forgets everything and so she has to solve the case again it's a she right yeah it's a she so it it kind of appears amazing and i'm very excited to read this then another one that i am so so about i am positive that this might be good because it's uh an adult novel or so it appears however it's by the same writer of the maze runner series and I didn't like that series a lot. I haven't even read it. I've like watched the movie, the first movie, and uh, the premise of that is terrible. But it's called The House of Tongues and by James Dashner. And I don't know, it's called The House of Tongues, you know? If I am expecting gore, but I don't know. It, apparently it's a dark journey of generational horror. Um, it has to do with this dude, he's 30 years old, he has some traumas in childhood. Um, yeah, and uh, he has this family that has a hatred for his family. Um, I don't know, but he's back uh, to the place where he used to live and he brings his four children and he's visiting his parents' home. Um, and then uh, the son of that family that used to hate his parents and him uh, comes back and uh, in a terrifying display right in front of the kids, the man utters threats until he chokes on his own tongue, sparking a series of events that drag David and his family back into the days of curses and murders onto a path of unimaginable terror all too familiar. And I mean, it says that path leads to an old gothic tower in the woods, a place David had blocked from his memory, a house of horrors, both past and present, the house of tongues. And I mean, if there's a tower, a gothic tower in the fucking middle of the woods called the house of fucking tongues, I am hoping there is gore. Finally, <laughs> we have an amazing one, and that is The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake. Why does this have a thing here? I'm afraid to take it off, but look at it! Oh my god, and it's signed on the inside. Oh, <gasps> It has in pages. Oh my god! It is the Waterstone edition, supposedly signed. Yes, yes, it is, it is fucking signed. 
my god and i absolutely love the atlas 6 when i read it and i pre-ordered this fucking immediately and it's so beautiful and i'm so excited to see where the story is going i don't know if there's going to be a third book i mean maybe narrator this is like a this is another thing Oh, okay, so there's going to be another one. It's going to be a trilogy. I'm very excited and I cannot wait to just start reading this fucking thing. So yeah, so beautiful, so gorgeous. I love the Atlas 6. I want to read the Atlas Paradox so, so much. So yeah, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you liked, leave a like or subscribe and tell me down below if you've read any of these or got any of these for you recently as well. And that's going to be all for today. So happy readings to you all. Bye.